Hi, this is Stacy from The Advisor, and today I'm very excited because we have our special guest today. It's Dawn Kohler, and she is here to tell us a little about herself and what she does, and it's very interesting. She has some great advice for us. So take it away, Dawn. Why don't you tell us a little about yourself and what you do? Oh, well, thank you, Stacey. I, I appreciate that. Uh, I'm an executive coach, uh, predominantly in the entertainment industry, and I work with people at all levels helping them to overcome just inherent obstacles that they have within themselves or obstacles that they have within their environment so that they can grow into a larger version of themselves, if you will. That's wonderful. So what are some of the things that you see uh, that, that goes on in, in today's world that you find very prevalent that people need help with? Well, certainly everybody's stressed out, you know, yeah. <laughs> we, uh, you know, stress and anxiety, depression is increasing everywhere, not just amongst the youth, but see a lot of that in the work environment uh, for many reasons. Yeah. Coming back out of COVID, coming into COVID was a cultural shift. Coming out of yeah. COVID, another cultural shift. People are, you know, resisting going back full time. Leaders want them back full time. Right. Um, so between just the these massive shifts that we've had, yeah, um, the pressures of work and you know doing more with less is very real, right? Uh, and just the the typical, especially thirties and forty year olds, you know, balancing family and work and aging parents, and it's all very real and it's you know stressful. You know, um, people don't realize, but like 70% of stress, um, you know, causes illness. And in today's world right now, I find, especially because finances, you know, prices are up and, you know, people are struggling right now to make ends meet. You know, I, I feel like people are going through a lot. You have business owners, you have people even working in corporations and organizations that are struggling just to, to make it week by week. And, you know, it's really getting to them, you know, you know, uh, stress wise and people just can't you know come home and relax anymore it's constantly on their mind about the next things they need to do and why are they plateauing why aren't they moving forward you know how am I going to pay this bill how am I going to pay that bill what do you say to those people what advice do you get to people who are just you know right now in a in a, in a place where they just feel like they're not getting ahead no matter how hard they try and financially they see themselves falling so it's stressful and it's it's uh you know it can play a toll at home and at work too. So, you know, what do you say to those people? What advice can you give? Well, those are my children. You know? <laughs> <laughs> the workforce, they are all frustrated. They're not making enough money. They're not, you know, able to buy houses. They're, it's just, everything has gotten so expensive. Yes. And it's causing them a, a great deal of stress. So it's always going to be stressful. Um, and I tell my clients, there's, there's what's happening that is causing stress. And then there's what, we're adding on to it that's causing stress. There's how we're interpreting it. There's the, the um, you know, I'm never going to own a home or I'll never make enough or I'll never, never this or never that. And every time we add those never, it, it takes a problem, a stressor, and it inflates it. And now instead of carrying a 10 pound bag, we're carrying a 40 pound bag. Yeah. It doesn't change anything us inflating it doesn't make the problem go away. It just creates more stress for us. So one of the things I regularly help my clients with is we really have to become more objective about our point of view and how we see things. Right. Uh, the comparative approach, which social media has really amplified the comparative approach. This person just got a promotion over at Snap and this person had just got this and they're making X and this person. So we're seeing all of this, our friends, our peer group, and it makes us feel like we're behind. Yes. And that feeling of behind creates stress. So first and foremost, just get rid of the comparative approach. Oh, hundred percent. Um, yeah. There's nothing but stress in that. Everybody goes at their own pace and everybody seems to catch up, you know, I mean, if you look at the trajectory of, you know, the kids in high school that were doing well and went to college and did this and did that and were making great money in their 20s, everybody kind of levels out at a certain point, you know, that yes. the leaders catch up a little bit. Um, the superstars are always going to be the superstars, but that has its own price. 
And you really have to play your own game in life. It um, comparing it to others, this is, you know, a sure ticket to misery. Uh, right. So if you can become what I call um, a, a central locus of control. So make that locus of control, how you feel about yourself, what you're doing internal to you, intrinsic, not external to you, not based on what others are doing, but based on what your life path is. Right. Uh, some people are just late bloomers because they had to deal with um, an ill parent early on or the loss right. of a parent early on. Um, you know, they had to deal with their addiction first. Yes. And, you know, one of my children went through addiction issues in the mm-hmm. 20s and has been sober for 10 years. But the maturation that he had to go through during that time sets him up really well in his 30s. Yeah. But he's still lagging right now. Right. And, um, but, you know, I look at that and I'm like, yeah, but you're ahead of the game in social psychological issues, maybe not financial ones. Right. You'll catch up in that. And some of those people will be taken down for other reasons later on. Mm-hmm. So you just have to really think about your path. What is, are you in alignment with what you're here to do and keep the day-to-day in an objective format? And that in itself is difficult. I feel like that's such a great point because, you know, when you look at things like, you know, like, like say you look at Tony Robbins or you look at some of the great speakers, they're on level, you know, they're on level, you know, 50 or 60. And then you come in and you feel like you're on level two or three and it gets frustrated. It's like, why, you know, you're comparing yourself to other people, but they, they've been in the business longer. They've experienced more, they've done more, they've made more connections. So you really can't compare yourself to other people because you really don't know what they've been through, but I'm sure when they were at your level they were doing they were exactly the same as you and i think that's one of the biggest problems is we compare ourselves to other people when we you know when we can't we should not compare ourselves to other people we should you know look at ourselves and commend ourselves for the accomplishments we, we made you know right. the worst thing you could do is compare yourself to others because really everybody has their own story and walked a different you know pathway so everyone's going to be at a different level and I think today, especially in today's society where you have social media and you have TV, okay, they kind of blow things up and they make things look more glamorous. And these people, you get the idea that they've, you know, they're so far ahead, but you don't really know what their true stories are when the camera goes off. And you really, you know, that's the part that people keep secretive. But then you hear stories later on, horror stories about what happened to this one and what happened to that one, because they make it so glamorous on TV and they give people the wrong perspective, I believe. I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, you and I will probably never be at, at the status of Brene Brown. Right. Uh, but that is somebody, you know, we can look up to and admire and say, you know, would have, should have, could have done that kind of thing. But the reality is, you know, two things. One, you just can't account for that moment where you catch a wave. You yes. know, she did her, U- or, uh, excuse me, her TED talk. And I'm sure Brene Brown didn't know what that TED talk was going to do. How right. well that went. Uh, and she went, you know, meteoric rise. I mean, she just went straight up so quickly. Yes. Um, and you just can't, you can prepare for those moments. You can be doing what you do best. And then those moments hit and you get elevated, but you can't you can't necessarily plan for them. You could prepare for them, but they're either going to happen or they're not going to happen. And that's just that person's lot in life. Yes. It doesn't make them any less or more important than us. Everybody's efforts matter. They just need to be true to you. Uh, and to your other point, which is, do you want to be Brene Brown? Uh, you know, she's cranked out by publishers saying, you've got to have this book by X. You've got to have, you know, she's getting sent all around the world on these particular tours, you know, she right. got to play at home. She's, I, I look at her life and I think, God, that's stressful. Yeah. Cause now she has to be Brene Brown. Yes. <laughs> she has to be the brand. Yeah. And that's difficult too. So I think you just want to look again, go back to your own self, what you're here to do. Everybody's efforts matter. What matters is that you, you express your truest contribution. Right. And that could be to two people, to five people. It could be to one child. It could be to whoever it is. 
You're here to express your unique contribution. And within that, we all have barriers. We all have ways that we block ourselves. We all have right. ways we diminish what we could do here. And focusing more on that, where am I playing it small? Where am I diminishing myself? What messages am I telling myself that are preventing me from, you know, filling my own shoes, being the best right. version of me? And that I think you can control. That's within your scope. That's where you can yes. make a difference. Uh, the comparative or being miserable or being stressed out because you're not here doesn't get you anywhere. Right. I, I think you're hundred percent right. And I think that's great advice and people have to just commend themselves for their efforts and really, you know, give themselves a pat on the back because every accomplishment is a, is a big accomplishment, you know, and people sometimes don't give themselves enough of credit when they do make accomplishments. I think that your hardest critic is yourself. That's the problem. Right. And, you know, one of the most glaring issues I see out there is this, you know, whether it's imposter syndrome or inse latent insecurities, feeling you're not good enough, then they feel they're good enough. And then somebody critiques their PowerPoint presentation, all of a sudden they're leveled. You know, all of that is, uh, all of that really expresses this kind of sense of low self-worth or inadequacy that so many people have. Yeah. And we're in the workforce or we're in our relationships trying to overcompensate for that, trying to be good enough. And that's not a game you can ever win. Right. Because trying to prove you're good enough supports the premise that you're not. Right. And that will only continue to, um, you know, it's, it's going to accentuate that wound. It's not going to heal it. The better way is to find your inherent goodness regardless of what you do. Right. Uh, and then once you're centered in that, recognize the efforts yourself. I uh, typically will put my clients on what I'll call recognition moments. Mm -hmm. where just, you know, get a journal and at the end of the day, write two or three things that you acknowledge that you did well. Yes. It can be, you know, I walked my dog mm -hmm. and, you know, you know, the dog didn't sit inside all day. Right. Well, I took my friend's phone call and it was a comforting voice because, you know, she just had some bad news or whatever it is. And maybe it's work related, personal, whatever. But once we start recognizing ourselves, we become far less dependent on other people recognizing us. Right. And then you really start to get in alignment with yourself and become stronger. Yes. That there is less anxiety, mm -hmm. less depression and um, more motivation. Right. So much of the depression and the anxiety, I think, is this disconnection we have with who we are. You know, oh, we're out there focused on the external instead of nurturing the internal. Yeah. And we created this great divide between our own sense of self and spirit mm -hmm. and our brand or what yeah. we're trying to be or what somebody thinks we should be. And that chasm, depending on how far away you actually are from who you are. Right you know, you can fall into that and feel extremely lost. That's why I feel like it's, it's so important for people to realize that we need to connect with our mind, body, and spirit, because I think when we lose connection with ourselves, our inner selves, that's when the problems start to occur, because I feel like our body is always giving us direction. You know, that's where the spirit comes in and the intuition, you know, and I think people really need to spend some quality time, even like, I, I, I don't know how you feel about it, but even meditation, just taking 15 minutes out of the day, just to be by yourself, maybe do some breathing exercises or whatever you feel comfortable just to, to, you know, appreciate and, and to kind of connect with yourselves or even like to take a walk and just to breathe the fresh air and have some gratitude and really, you know, and not focus so much on the materialistic world around us. Cause I think in the United States, we've been blessed with so much that we don't realize we're like, I want, I want, I want, but we don't realize, you know, if you go to a third world country, then you become, you, you know, you'll come back and you'll have gratitude because you'll realize, you know, that, you know, we, we are blessed with so much, you know, and I think people forget that. Oh, absolutely. I mean, for as wealthy as we are, uh, we're spiritually bankrupt in many regards. Yeah. where some third world, world countries are actually far more satisfied than many yes. Americans. Uh, I recently wrote the book, The Messages, and that was about my own healing journey. And in that book, to your point, you know, I started, I fell into my own chasm and into a deep depression. I was running yeah. the company at the time and I, 
And uh, what happened to me is I, I literally couldn't go to work anymore. And I started to get these inaudible messages that said, this is no longer your way and started to direct me. Now I'm very um, flat footed in, in regard to these things, but it was just undeniable what was happening. And I'd wake into these messages and they were, they would literally lead me. And I think that's true of everybody. We just, I had to hit crisis in order to listen to the messages. Yeah. I think we're much better off if we can begin to tune into them prior to our own personal crisis. Yeah. And, you know, personal crisis is out there for everybody, but I do also think they're avoidable if we tune in. And one of the ways to tune in, as you said, is meditation. You know, mm. meditation to the mind is like working out to the body. Yeah. It actually, they're showing in MRIs that it's, it is expanding or growing the gland in the frontal cortex that um, helps us with objectivity mm -hmm. and gives us that ability to not just react emotionally to everything we hear or see, but to respond mindfully and intentionally with, hmm, what does that really mean? Getting curious about it. So we're not spiraling in old habits, but we're able to stop that uh, old way and uh, assumptions about what's happening to us and to other people and what that means about us and really kind of cut into that narrative and start to live a life that says, you know what, there are other paths, there are other choices. I don't need to repeat this message to myself or I don't need to repeat this behavior. I can choose another way that is going to support the spirit and align me with self right. versus alienate me, alienate me from self. I think that's so important because, you know, you made a good point because a lot of times people will not listen to their inner, inner selves and they will not take care of themselves eternally. They, you know, we're supposed to put ourselves on a plateau and really, you know, not a plateau, but, uh, you know, um, let's say, uh, we're supposed to put ourselves above, you know, we really should, you know, where this, we should keep ourselves as a sanctuary, you know, and really take care of ourselves. And, you know, because we can't take care of others unless we take care of ourselves. And many times people are, are always focused on everything else but themselves. And that's when they hit rock bottom is when they're not connected with themselves. Exactly. And a lot of times that's where addiction will come in too. You'll go into the anxiety and then you'll go into the depression. And then many people will turn to addiction to use it as a coping mechanism to, you know, because they just don't know how to cope with all those emotions that are coming through. And, you know, that's where we have to really, you know, you know, really focus, I think, is taking that time out, that me time, you know, for ourselves. And I think that, you know, along with that, because addiction will completely alienate you from self. Yeah. Um, people think, you know, oh, it, it gets you closer to yourself, but it actually doesn't. It, no. it it's the intuitive principles and the path. So, I mean, that's soul killing in itself. Yeah. Again, it's so important to have some sort of daily practice that you can attune with self, whatever or however that is. Mm -hmm. So you can continue to grow that part of you and allow yourself to embody that part of you. You know, right. we all have energy running through us and uh, out of our own fear for our own power, we often, you know, run from that. Yeah. And everything we run from is actually what we need. Yeah. And so there's a really a great reckoning that we all need to do with ourselves as individuals in order to bring that into not only our awareness, our acceptance, our embodiment, but be at peace with it. Yeah. And feel worthy of it and feel connected to it and live by it. And that's really a, a practice. There are plenty of ways you can get out of depression and anxiety, but anything short of that isn't going to be sustainable or will lead to another problem down the line. Oh, I agree. Totally. I agree. Totally. So tell me a little more about your book. So what, how, where can people find that book? Amazon.com. It's called The Messages. Uh, it's a memoir. And it was really over a three-year period of time. I I wrote it because I had to, part of the messages was to write the book, but it really depicts uh, what, what so many of us go through, which is that, that healing journey. Yeah. And it, you know, also known as an awakening journey or the hero's journey. And why I think it's so important is it, it, there is for many of us, some sort of initiation, something happens, there's a loss or there's a birth of a baby or something occurs that changes our world forever. The yeah. world and is no longer the world 
we are in, you know, at that point, we've crossed the threshold. And once you cross to the threshold, it's miraculous in a way that everything you need to heal, you'll attract, it'll come yes. in one way or another. And sometimes that isn't a comfort, you know, help is not always a comfort. There's reckoning that has to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, it was reckoning with my past and, and abuse memories and um, that I had far suppressed and just tried to prove that I was better than what happened to me. Right. And again, that's a dead end road. So I had to go through some of that. I had to go through all of that. Yeah. And one of the things that, you know, you learn along the way is you must tolerate the discomfort for growth to really occur. Oh, a hundred percent. There is discomfort in acknowledging things that have happened to us or acknowledging the pain of the loss that we had or, you know, unresolved grief. All of that requires a time of grief and mourning, letting go, yeah. uh, changing. And so often we just don't have the tolerance for the discomfort that we're in. Oh, we want 100%. to medicate the depression. We want to, you know, numb it. We want to just get out of it. And then it becomes this kind of lifetime problem of trying to avoid something that you can actually go through. Right. Uh, so my greatest recommendation for people is when you have those opportunities for healing, and we all do, we mm -hmm. all have losses in our life and they are portals, if you will, into our underworld where we can examine things in our side of ourselves that we've been holding and harboring that need to be released, that are asking to be released. That's part of the soul's journey is to let these things go yeah. so that you grow into a larger capacity. You're at, you have a larger container in which to be compassionate and loving towards others and to right. embrace your innate skill set or your innate gifts to the kingdom, if you will. Right. So, you know, we go through these journeys and, you know, if you look at most heroes journeys, there's painful parts of them. Yeah. And Certainly mine was as well, but every time I went there, I was given what I needed to get through it. And I, there was always this nugget of insight. Yeah. The other end of it. I remember this one particular time when uh, somebody that was very close to me in that book, I, I won't give the reveal, but mm -hmm. they ended up leaving. And so I lost that person. Mm -hmm. And I remember, um, feeling because of the way it happened, extremely rejected. Right. And I just found myself sobbing all night long. I mean, literally sobbed all night long. Yeah. You go through the emotions and it wasn't just what happened in that moment. That was, that ripped off the wound. This was somebody that had only known for a short period of time. So that depth of pain, when it's something like that, that's just opening up other things that were far more painful. And what it yes. opened up to me is an abandonment or rejection from my mother. So mm. I'm sobbing all night, turning into, you know, the five-year-old that was, you know, left uh, for certainly psychologically by my mother. And I remember at the end of the sobbing, I just was so exhausted. I rolled back on the floor because I was on the floor and I looked out the window and the sun was coming up and the sky was blue and then it was pink and then it was blue. It was absolutely gorgeous. And this, again, this not inaudible sort of message came up, be it from my own soul or wherever. And it said, love is not what you receive from others. It's what you give to them. Yeah. And I remember in that moment feeling liberated. Like love is my own experience. If yeah. I have love and I love somebody else, I will always have love. Yes. Not dependent on somebody else. So if somebody else goes away, I still have love. Right. I can tolerate that. I'm not left without that vital source that we all need. Yeah. And it was really through going through all of my own beliefs about love in just mourning and grieving and letting all that sadness and abandonment go that I was able to own my own source. Uh, and that was, again, I, I probably, probably the most liberating experience of my life. Now I, I had love as long as I loved <laughs> and love is so important, especially loving yourself. That I think is one of the main components is we have yeah. to learn to love ourselves before we can love anybody else, you know? Mm -hmm. And a lot of times when we come from dysfunctional families, a lot of us aren't taught how to love, you know, the right way. 
and it's a, you know, but it can be learned, you know, and, uh, but, you know, like you said, I think a lot of things come from the root cause and sometimes we don't know what the root cause is. And I, I find in my own life, you know, I would, you know, when I was going through tragedy, I was talking, you know, to people and I was, you know, I was talking to a therapist and trying to get through this really tough time in my life. And I didn't, you know, what I thought was the problem was not actually the problem. And mm -hmm. it, it stemmed from something going back. And, and then, you know, you realize too, is that like you said, a healing process is a painful process, but once you get over the hump, wow, it, it's just like a whole new life. You know, it's just, it's an amazing, amazing feeling, but it takes work and it's dedication and it's also painful. But in a sense, the outcome is, is so rewarding, I feel. It's it's everything, you know? I mean, it's it's the difference between a life half lived and a life fully lived. Yeah. On the other side of that, you often find uh, opportunities that put you in alignment where you can best serve. Yeah. And with that comes tremendous growth and success, happiness, relationships. I mean, I can tell you, my life today is just so infinitely full and the success has been actually easy because right. I, because on the other end of it, I aligned with really what I was supposed to do. Right. Uh, and that, that has made things organic. That's the best way. I mean, my, my career has grown in a very organic way and I've been very honored and blessed to have been able to coach the people that I have uh, but I can honestly say it has never been work. It really has just been, I caught the current and, you know, the current has taken me and I've really enjoyed the ride, but I don't think I could have caught that current because I would have been too afraid to go into it or I wouldn't have been prepared for it yeah. had I not taken the journey. Cause it was really the journey that prepared me to be at, of service on the other side of it. I you know, also coaching, coaching was a combination of the business acumen I already had because I was running a computer company at the time all this all started. Yeah. And then learning so much about the human dynamic through my own healing process. And when those two came together, I was asked to actually work with these senior leaders and coaching just hit and I was like hitting the sweet spot. It's like, oh, this is what I'm meant to do. And it's been a referral business since, you know, from day one. I really never had to even market it. It's just been, I was in the right place doing the right thing. That's amazing. Where can people find more about your coaching services? I, my book and coaching, all of that can be at uh, dawncoller.com. That's D-A-W-N-K-O-H-L-E-R.com. And if you had to give people before we close a few tips on, you know, how to move through the stresses of life and the stresses of work and everything we've discussed, you know, how people get stuck, you know, and not being able to move forward in life. And, and sometimes like we talked about self-esteem, not having the courage to rise up from the chaos, you know, what would you suggest to those people? Any, you know, any specific tips that you feel are the most prevalent that you think would have, would be, you know, the most beneficial? I would say just get very present in your own life and what's happening today, because everything in the past that needs to be healed will show up in your current life. It's yeah. actually outside of linear time. Everything that is unprocessed is still unprocessed. And if you pay attention, attention you'll, show, you'll notice that you react very strongly in certain situations. Yes. Well, there's something in that situation that needs to be healed. Yeah. If, you know, you're reacting, if if the situation recalls for a 20% reaction and you're having an 80% one, then there's something to that. So right. I would say pay attention to the areas where you're triggered and go into those triggers and find out what they're about. Right. Um, the other thing is, you know, when you do find yourself in difficult circumstances, feel them. Mm -hmm. uh, don't push them aside. Don't run out of them. Allow them to change you allow them to show you what you need to know, allow them to change the beliefs you have about yourself, tolerate the discomfort so that you can get the gifts and the jewels that are embedded in those times of difficulty, because that's what's going to make you stronger. That's what's going to give you the resources on the other side to have a life that is certainly um, 
just more effortless, you know? Right. Yeah. And that's, that's true self mastery. And the other thing, and you pointed out, I, I think all of this starts to become um, more manageable when we take the time to do that 15, 20 minute meditation every morning mm -hmm. to connect with ourselves, to grow that gland in the frontal cortex so we can be objective, so we can get connected to the part of us that's trying to heal us. Yes. And this massive amount of intelligence that is accessible uh, to us. I mean, you know, you talk about artificial intelligence. <laughs> we have real intelligence inside of us that we're not tapping. <laughs> yes. And the more we can do that, uh, the more we can quiet our mind and follow those messages that will guide us to, you know, our best, you know, life in this lifetime. Oh, hundred percent. I think that's great advice. You know, this has been a pleasure, Dawn. Thank you so much for being on the show. And once again, tell everybody your book, the name of your book, so they don't forget. It's called The Messages. And it's by Don Kohler. That's D A W N K O H L E R. And everybody, that's where you can find her website. It's her first and last name dot com. And you know, she has great advice. And she has an amazing website. I've been on her website and I just love it. You have a lot of great information there. And you know, you have your coaching services and everything else. So, you know. I, you know, I commend you on what you're doing, you know, and I thank you so much for giving such great advice today and helping us so much with, you know, a very important issue that a lot of people are struggling with in today's society. So thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. I appreciate it. Good luck to you. And I hope our, our paths cross again. Yes, definitely. Definitely. You have a great day. Thank you.